James Kaufman, World News Report, today, August 11th, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it appears that we're coming out of the coronal wind mess that we're in, and we we're impacted by the coronal mass ejection that popped off on the 5th, and currently, according to the estimated planetary index, we're under no geomagnetic disturbance or storm whatsoever, although we started the day out with three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. Now, I'll also check the satellite data, and this corresponds with the satellite data. Real quickly, the Boulder Index had six hours of a disturbance this morning, and now we're in the calm. We're supposed to be in the calm for several days. We'll see what happens. Take a look quickly at the Fredericksburg Index. Started the day with three hours of a disturbance. We had a very calm nine hours after that. We're back into a geomagnetic disturbance. Take a look at the College Index. We're in a G2 geomagnetic storm, and that'd be for the last nine hours. And we started the day in the geomagnetic disturbance. Our most sensitive, it must mean something though. We're going to go ahead and check the German KP index. And what do we see? Well, we started the day with a geomagnetic disturbance. It's been very quiet since then. And they've gone further through the day than we have. They only have, well, less than six hours to go. Headed to our GOES X-ray flux. We have had what looks to be at least four M flares today. And we had one late yesterday, as you can see here. This was an M1.7. Started the day out with an M1. That was quickly followed by an M1.3, and that was just before 4 UTC time. So we're still talking about before midnight, late last night, Central Time. We've had a lot of strong sea flaring throughout the day, and we just had a double M flare, it looks like, and... M 1.53 and an M 1.7 perhaps. These have not yet been posted, so I think I know where they came from, but we don't know exactly how strong they were. And they occurred right about, let's see, right about 14.45 and Right about 15.30 UTC time. That's going to be, of course, 7.45 and 8.30 Central Time this morning. Over to spaceweatherlive.com. We can see that 1.78 flare happened just before midnight last night. It's the strongest flare we've seen in 24 hours. Today, we had that M1 followed by the M1.3. We've just had two more M-class solar flares. And may I mention the M1.3 was actually generated by AR4173. The rest of them have been generated by our old friend AR4168. It looks like it might have become simple overnight. Remember AR4173. We currently have a 10% chance of having an X-class solar flare, a 55% chance of having an M-class solar flare. That ship has sailed, and we have a baseline of C3.52 currently. All right, looks like 4168's made its way around the outgoing limb. We have, if we include... Those sunspots that are really parting via the outgoing limb. We have, let's see, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 sunspots on the Earth-facing solar disk. 
where there's only one semi-complex sunspot, 4172. Now, 4173 is the sunspot we're going to keep an eye on, the one that produced the M-class solar flare. Remember that our ISWA geomagnetic connection is to the outgoing limb here. Earth is connected geomagnetically to that limb, and often if we have a large flare on that outgoing limb, it will be geoeffective towards Earth. All right, taking a look at GOES, solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. We all must question why we have this coronal hole directly Earth-facing still, and no solar winds in sight. I believe they're running right around 450 currently. We also have 4168 sending its last two presents out. There they go, one, two. Those are the M flares that have not been assigned a sunspot yet. And, well, we have a very complex sun with lots of sunspots up and above that. Over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center, we had plenty of C flares just all day long. And lastly, we had our two M flares that were sent to us as our last two presents from AR4168. There's one and there's two, mainly over the Atlantic, parts of the Caribbean, South America, and small parts of the U.S. Again, those were the last two, uh, two M flares that weren't assigned a sunspot group but we saw them pop off from the outgoing sunspot group, AR4168. All right, today is the 11th, starting right here, solar wind-wise. Looks like they started about 575, and go down to, it looks like about 475. I believe we're even slower than that currently. The solar winds have died off considerably. Today's the 11th, and they have plasma up and around 3 centimeters cubed, and maybe maxing out at 4 centimeters cubed, maybe 3.5 centimeters cubed, something very, very weak. Of course, we'll compare this to the real data on Discover and ACE in just one moment. And to further prove that NOAA and NASA see nothing in our future, this is our KP index forecast for the 11th, today the 12th and 13th. We see really nothing happening whatsoever. Started the day out with that geomagnetic disturbance, and we're fairly calm for the next three days if they got their forecast right. All right, those solar winds are still decreasing. They're actually up, according to this model, at 518 kilometers per second. And plasma is hovering around the 3 to 4 range, as you can see here, currently at 2.12 centimeters cubed. All right, this sunspot's already around the limb. It looks pretty ferocious to me. It's already been named. We also have O. Oh, one one here, zero zero eight here, uh, and zero one two here. This is a backside composite. This is the front of our sun, or Earth facing part of our sun, here and here. Over to our Discover real time solar wind satellite. Shields are basically down. We have plasma hovering. In the 1 to 4 range, as we discussed, there's a, well, a high point there, 8.92. And we might be able to pick up another one, 9.1, 9.68. We never break through the space where the threshold of 10 centimeters cubed. And... We have solar winds kind of all over the place, but they're in a downward trend. Start of the day out at 550, 
and it looks like we're down below 500 just barely at least on discover temperatures have been about average all day long we will check that work with ace real-time space weather satellite we have one anomaly right there it's going to be above the space weather threshold of 10 for one minute and that's all i see it might line up it doesn't look like it does with elevated temperature there uh, we have solar winds starting out at about 550 and they're down right below 500 so this matches up perfectly with our discover and temperatures have remained normal all day long no elevations or no large elevations in temperature over to STO HMI magnetogram well folks say bye to 4168 this is 4172 the beta gamma sunspot group this is 4178 fairly complex as well and this is our newly named sunspot group in the southern hemisphere it looks like it's reverse polarity with positive white over negative. Now, oftentimes coming around the limb, they look reverse polarity and quickly change into normal polarity. If they're in the southern hemisphere, it should always be black over white, negative over positive. If they're in the northern hemisphere, they should always be white over black. Uh, and I'm sure this will change up as the sun starts to flip its poles and by felicia this is uh 4172 directly earth facing beta gamma this is a large curl hole that doesn't seem to be spewing a lot of solar winds but just below 500 kilometers per second as discussed and this is the new sunspot group that looks reverse polarity coming around the limb Looks like it could be a doozy. Over to the European Space Agency and Euphoria. You can see that they haven't updated any of these models. It is Monday and they don't work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday at all. Half a day Tuesday. They work Wednesday, half a day Thursday. That's about all you get in a European work week. All right. Today is not a watch day, if you will, for large earthquakes, but because of where Earth is, it very well could be a day we see a large earthquake. We have the moon directly behind Earth, with the sun uh, in front of that. We have a couple of watch dates we'll bring up here, but first we have a geomagnetic connection. You can tell via the pink colors to Pluto, Mercury, Saturn, Neptune, Eris. And we lost our geomagnetic connection to Venus. Now we have the 14th and 15th here. You can see the moon lining up with Saturn and Neptune here. And also we're getting this line up here at the same time. That's the 14th and 15th. And then we have also the 20th and 21st. There's a 20th. You can see this line up with this coming off here. Now this looks real good. And then the 21st as well. So 14th, 15th, 20th, 21st. Uh, I would expect an uptick in solar activity and earthquake activity. Although while we're on the busy side of the solar system, something can happen and will happen every single day. That said, God bless. Please share our video. Please subscribe. And always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.